from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Let's begin the show with the special prayers offered by devotees from across the world to celebrate the festival of Deep Dan in Mathura city of Uttar Pradesh. Celebrated during the Hindu month of Karthik, which is said to be dear to Lord Krishna, prayers were offered to the deity. Take a look. The month of Karthik is considered to be one of the most auspicious months in Hinduism. Coinciding with the Gregorian months of October and November, major Hindu festivals are celebrated during this time. It is believed in Hinduism that worshipping Lord Vishnu and his avatars during this month bestows blessings. With the onset of this pious month, Krishna devotees from not just India but around the world started thronging Krishna temples in Mathura city of Uttar Pradesh to celebrate the festival of Deep Dan, that is lighting of lamps to honour the deity. This month is a special month of Kartik. This month is called Damadramash. विशेष करके दीपदान का व्यवस्था रखा किया जाता है जो कि एक दीपदान करने से लाखों माने पूरे साल का दीपदान का फल मिलता है Devotees from across the world, including those from Russia, China and the United States, clad in saffron attires, were seen dipped in festive spirit as they chanted Hare Krishna in the temple premises. People done sandalwood tilaks on their foreheads and offered candles, diyas and incense sticks to the deities. Devotees sang religious hymns and danced to the beat of drums as a mark of devotion towards Krishna. It was quite a sight to see the temple premises lit with a hundred diyas as all the devotees were full of faith and fervour for Lord Krishna. Deep Dhan has told us that the first deep dhan was done by Yashoda Maiya. When God was burning from the tree and the tree was burning from the tree, God was burning from the tree and Yashoda Maiya was burning from the tree. सारी देख सबसे पहले दीपदान उन्होंने किया शोध मैंने दीप दिखाया और देखा कि भगवान को कहीं चोट तो नहीं लगी तो तब से ये दीपदान शुरू हुआ है और जो भी कार्तिक के महीने में दीपदान करता है उसको कितने हजारों हजारों साल के उसके पाप खत्म हो जाते हैं तो बहुत बहुत ये महत्वपूर्ण है दीपदान करने Lord Krishna is worshipped as the eighth incarnation of Vishnu, the Hindu god of preservation. According to Hindu texts, Lord Krishna took birth in human form to kill Kansa, demon king of Mathura city and maternal uncle of Lord Krishna. India is a country where Sufism has not just flourished but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. Even today, the teachings of these saints inform the lives of people and this was very well reflected during the special prayers at the shrine of Saint Hazrat Qudabuddin Shah Rizaldar where people of all faiths assemble to seek the blessings of the Holy Saint. Situated in the Rachi city of Charkhand, the shrine of Hazrat Qutubuddin Shah Risaldar has been serving as a sinashaw of religious harmony for generations. Regarded as one of the greatest Sufi saints, Hazrat Qutubuddin Shah throughout his life spread the message of Sufism and peace. Recently, the 215th death anniversary or Urs of the Sufi saint was celebrated at the shrine which was attended by people of all religious communities. Sabi dharma ko log aate hain, yahan isa koi bheed bhav nahi hai. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh ke saai sabi koi aate hain, mannat leke sabi ka, sabi dharma ka mannat yahan pa pura hota hai. Ham loga kareeb 90 saal se dukaan hai, yeh mera nana ka hai. Aur community yaar ham loga ke bheez bhoot acha taal mel bana hua hai. यहाँ कोई ऐसा भेदभाव नहीं कि वो हिंदू है या वो मुसलमान है यहाँ बाबा का दरबार 24 घंटा खुला रहता है कभी भी आइए जाइए जायरीन के लिए यहाँ जितने भी कमेटी के सदस्य हैं सबको खड़ा रहते हैं उसका खिदमत के लिए 
Coming from far and wide, people of all religious communities attended the special prayers to seek the blessings of the saint. It is believed that the saint fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty-handed from here. We have been here for 15-16 years. 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 ऐसे में बराबर नहीं आते मगर जब मेरा मन करता है तो आ जाते हैं बस जो भी सोचते हैं मनकामना पूरा पूरा हो जाता है जो भी सोचते हैं मनकामना पूरा होता है आवासा मेरा पूरा यहाँ से रहता है नहीं कोई फर्क नहीं हम अच्छा लगता है यहाँ तो आते हैं ना बहुत शांति महसूस भी होता है बहुत अच्छा लगता है आते हैं कुछ पल के लिए अच्छा लगता है Since ages, the Sufi saints like Hazrat Qutbuddin Shah Rasaldar have propagated the message of spiritualism and harmony in our country and their teachings are still playing a significant role in strengthening the thread of secularism. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Bollywood actress Tara Sutaria promoted sustainable fashion as she turned muse for designer Aisha Rao at Lakme Fashion Week in Mumbai. Wearing embellished lehenga and off-shoulder blouse, Sutaria displayed the collection titled Trancades, which was made from waste. And I'm so happy to be here uh, at Fashion Week with Aisha, uh, whose work is really, really inspiring. And I think uh, millennials and people of all ages uh, will really, really resonate with this collection. And it's, it's beautiful, it's comfortable, it's sustainable. So, I mean, what more can I ask for? Designers Varun and Nidika's collection was presented by actress Janelia Deshmukh, who walked wearing a skirt paired with one side off-shoulder cape on the ramp as she showcased the essence of modern India. Meanwhile, actress Moni Roy walked in an embellished lehenga paired with a strapped blouse for designer Payal Singhal. Indian consumers are lapping up everything from cars, houses and television sets to travel and jewellery in the festive season that began last month, according to early data giving a fillip to the growth prospects despite economic gloom elsewhere in the world. Online and offline sales during the Hindu festival period starting in the last week of September and lasting until early November are estimated to cross 27 billion US dollars, almost double the amount in the same pre-COVID period in 2019 and nearly 25% higher than last year according to industry estimates. The sales would include nearly 15.2 billion US dollars offline sales compared to about 8.5 billion US dollars in 2019 according to the Confederation of All India Traders. लोग तो दिल से बाहर निकले हैं और ज्वेलरी का रेट्स भी गोल का रेट अभी 50,000 के रेंज में है तो लोगों के मन में 50,000 का रेट एक लगभग बॉटम आ गया है कि इससे नीचे जाएगा तो इट्स अ बाइंग अपॉर्चुनिटी तो 50 के आसपास रहने से लोगों में उत्साह है और फेस्टिवल में हमारे कल्चर में ही सोना है तो लोग फेस्टिवल में दशहरा में दिवाली में खरीदारी करते हैं Retail sales always peak during October-November when the nation of 1.4 billion celebrates the major festivals of Dasera and Diwali. It's also an auspicious time of the year to get married according to Hindu beliefs. The Defence Ministry of India organized an expo displaying new defence missiles, launchers and loitering munitions in western Gujarat state. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh attended the first day of the two-day event in the twin cities of Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad, where the flagship event Manthan of the IDEX Innovations for Defence Excellence was held. As you all know, IDEX is a self-reliant and self-sufficient initiative for the Mahathapun initiative. This initiative भारत के उभरते हुए इंटरप्रेन्योर्स को एक प्लेटफार्म प्रदान करता है। इसके माध्यम से इंटरप्रेन्योर्स को आर्थिक रूप से सहयोग प्रदान किया जाता है, जिससे वे स्टेट ऑफ़ द आर्ट टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलप करने की दिशा में तेजी से आगे बढ़ सकें। Loitering munition Nagastra II and rocket system Pinaki were some of the weapons showcased at the Defence Expo. 
The expo was followed by an air show where the defense personnel flew smoke emitting helicopters making patterns in the sky. Defense Expo 2022 celebrated the 12th edition of the annual event which aims to promote entrepreneurship in the field of defense innovations. Communal harmony is the hallmark of any democracy and world's largest democracy India has very well maintained its status of a multicultural harmonious nation. Years ago, a Muslim man had donated his land for the construction of a Lakshmi Narayan temple in Bareilly city of Uttar Pradesh which still stands tall as a symbol of religious harmony. The world has remained awestruck by India's ability to become a home to a number of different religions, ethnicities and castes. For years, different religions have not just resided peacefully on this land but have also been performing acts of kindness for their fellow religions that continue to inspire people even today. One such example is that of the Lakshmi Narayan Temple of Bareilly, known as the Chunnamiya Temple among locals as it is constructed on the land donated by a Muslim man named Fazal ul Rahman or Chunnamiya. कटरा मानने में जो ये मंदिर है बहुत ही प्रसिद्ध मंदिर है और बहुत दूर से लोग यहाँ आते हैं फजाउल रहमान जी जो हैं उस चुन्ना मियाँ उन्होंने इस मंदिर के लिए ज़मीन तो दी ही थी साथ में उन्होंने यहाँ उसमें पैसे भी दिए और सबसे बड़ा काम ये था कि उन्होंने इस मंदिर जब बनना शुरू हो रहा था तो उन्होंने उसमें सेवा भी करी मंदिर के जब निर्माण हो रहा था उन्होंने सेवा भी करी और इस मंदिर का जब उद्घाटन हुआ तब देश के प्रथम राष्ट्रपति डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद जी ने उसका उद्घाटन करने वो यहाँ आए थे और पूरे बरेली में की अगर हम बात करें तो बरेली के अलावा पूरे देश के अंदर एक सामुदायिक सौहार्द की अगर बात करेंगे तो ये मंदिर उसकी बहुत बड़ी मिसाल है अराउंड 55 फाइव ईयर्स अगो फजल उल रहमान अ रेसिडेंट ऑफ बरेली डोनेटेड हिज लैंड फॉर द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दिस टेम्पल नॉट ओनली डिड ही गिव इज लैंड बट ऑल्सो डोनेटेड मनी एंड वर्क ड्यूरिंग इट्स कंस्ट्रक्शन एज अ सिम्बल ऑफ ब्रदरहुड बिटवीन द टू कम्युनिटीज Even after years, people remember his act of kindness and praise him for spreading the message of harmony. ये सेवार्थ हैं अपनी अपनी जो जैसी सेवा करता है हाँ उन्होंने सहयोग किया लक्ष्मी नारायण मंदिर है जहाँ आप खड़े हैं जिस जमीन पे वो जमीन उन्हीं की थी उन्होंने ये चुन्ना मिया भजल रहमान चुन्ना मिया तो उन्होंने दान में दिया था इट इज ड्यू टू एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक दीज इंडिया स्टैंड एज एन अनडिफीटेबल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ब्रदरहुड एंड रिलीजियस हार्मनी अराउंड द वर्ल्ड Well sandalwood has always been of great religious and artistic importance in India artisans have been using sandalwood for carving for centuries the beauty of sandalwood art pieces is a treat to the human eye recently kamlesh jangid a national award winning sandalwood miniature artist has carved a sandalwood statue worth 1 crore rupees take a look Sandalwood carving is an ancient tradition that has been part of Indian culture and finds its mention in ancient texts as well. The hub of this ancient art form is the western state of Rajasthan which is not only famous for its scenic beauty but also for its exotic art and craft industry. In Jaipur city, national award winning sandalwood miniature artist Kamlesh Jangir meticulously carved women of sandalwood worth rupees 1 crore. वो चंदन की महिला मैंने बनाई है वो साढ़े तीन फिट की है उसमें सात साल लगे थे मुझे बनाने में एक एक चीज़ बनाने में उसकी चुनरी पूरी हवा से हिलती है उसमें ग्यारह खिड़कियां खुलती हैं जिसमें मैंने राजस्थान के जितने भी वीर वीरांगनाएं हैं उनकी गाथाएं बनाई है जैसे हाडी रानी हो गया हल्दी घाटी का युद्ध हो गया पन्ना धाए का हो गया पद्मनी का जोहर हो गया तो ये चीज़ें मैंने उसमें दिखाई है सारी This artwork was kept on display at the National Handicrafts Fair which was organized in Jaipur. It took 7 years for Jangir to complete this masterpiece. The artwork weighs around 80 kg and the veil in this statue is made by sandalwood thread which moves with the wind. 
Kamlesh Jangir is the fourth generation of his family carrying forward this ancient art form. I'm working from childhood. I was six years old when I was working. I got a district award in my nine years. I got a district award in my nine years. I got a district award in my nine years. I got a district award in my nine years. I got a district award in my nine years. और मैंने ये मेरे बुजुर्गों से सीखी है मेरे पुरखों से सीखी है चौथी पीढ़ी है इस कला में मेरे को और पांचवी पीढ़ी यानी मेरी बेटी है वो भी इस कला को सीख रही है कमलेश जांगिर हैज बीन डूइंग सैंडल वुड कार्विंग सिंस ही वाज नाइन इयर्स ओल्ड हिज फैमिली हैज बीन अ रिसिपिएंट ऑफ अ टोटल ऑफ इलेवन नेशनल अवार्ड फॉर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू दिस आर्ट फॉर्म And at the end, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. While other cities spare on street lighting and even cancel Christmas markets, residents in Prague were able to enjoy a bright highlight as the city's landmarks were illuminated with lights and lasers for this year's Signal Festival. The festival aims to bring spectators modern art and new technology with the city serving as a canvas according to organizers. So, I'm from Croatia. First time here and we enjoy it and we would like to see more and we're we'll going for more. Prague's Signal Festival brings modern art and new technology to the wider public and professionals. attracts thousands of visitors annually to open air installations around the historical city the event went through a two year break because of the covid-19 pandemic and resumed in 2021 with tourism coming to a standstill during the pandemic japan's tourism industry was no exception Organized with a motive to revive tourism in the island country, a Tourism Expo Japan 2022 was held in Tokyo after four years break. At the expo, major players from the tourism industry, along with Japanese authorities, set up booths and invited tourists to the country. Okinawa is a popular tourist destination. Tourists visit Okinawa to see the beautiful ocean and mountains and taste unique food. Okinawa Prefecture is promoting Okinawa Karate as a new way to attract tourists along with spreading awareness regarding the origin of karate in Okinawa. Okinawa Karate Hashio no chi nan desu ne. Nanode, eh motomoto sono kono chisai 100 man zenbo gorai shikai nai kenmin ga ma chisa no shima kara sekai jiu ni karate ga hiromatte. De sekai jiu ni ma 1 ok 3000 man ni カラテ愛好家がいると言われてるんですね。その1億3千万人の方々にぜひ沖縄のこの本物まあそれぞれがもういろんな流派には分かれてるんですけれども、それがもその元が沖縄だということをまずは知っていただきたいと。でその本あの本場の沖縄カラテ発祥地の沖縄がどんなものなのかっていうことを体験していただきたいということで。沖縄に来てもらって、実際それを肌で感じてもらいたいっていうのが我々が考えているところです。Japan has significantly eased entry from foreign countries due to the reduction of coronavirus cases. Using the UAE's desert as a testing ground, an ag tech startup creates a natural clay liquid. Nearly as thin as water to turn dry lands into green landscapes. At a mobile site in the city of Al Ain, Desert Control produces its patented liquid natural clay LNC formulation, which consists of clay processed into a liquid compound that will then be applied to a desert sand. After 12 years of research, Desert Control's clay-rich soil treatment proved to improve soil health and crop yields. By retaining water and resisting drought, the fact that agriculture and the landscape and such is using up a lot of the water that's here, and you know the price for getting new water is is high through desalination, both in terms of cost and carbon footprint. So there are good drivers in place to drive down the the water consumption, 
uh, and, and that can be a big driver, then we're also focusing on you know, the food security aspect, not just from water, but the yields of the crops, the soil health, uh, you know, getting a more healthy and sustainable agriculture method. Vowing to make the earth green again and to revolutionize the war against desertification, the startup said that LNC treatment reduced water consumption by 47%. The UAE has always been naturally burdened with dry soil and hot weather, which combined cause sand and dust storms. The effects of climate change combined with a growing population and economy diversifying into tourism in other areas have pushed up the demand for water in the UAE, which has relied on expensive desalination plants that make use of sea water. Japan's coffee culture is very popular throughout the world. To promote the same, the SCAJ World Specialty Coffee Conference and Exhibition 2022 was held in Tokyo. It is Asia's largest coffee trade fair. The theme of the conference was Come, Join the Specialty Coffee Community. Different high-quality coffee beans along with state-of-the-art machines from around the world were displayed there. Japan's coffee market has exponentially grown and is gaining attention from across the globe. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.